What's good, guys? What is up, everybody? This is Jeff Lightsey Jr. You're watching the Victory Formation Sports Show right here on Jeff Lightsey Jr. YouTube, Facebook, and wherever else you get your stuff. Uh, come on into the room. I'm here. I am here. I'm still here in Jackson, as you see. I'm in my hotel. Uh, I just got back. Finally, finally made it back from the SWAG Championship game where we saw Jackson State win the SWAG Championship game. And, and I'll break down the game at some other point. I, I hate to say it, but the game is secondary we kind of knew what was going to happen they had beat southern 35 to nothing they were just a better team than southern but southern quarterback bubba shout out to bubba he played a really really good game he if he would have started from the beginning i mean we might be talking a little different let's not hear what we're talking about uh it's been announced colorado has come out and said and coach prime has come out and said and i've already said it to you already once as i was in the car but uh deon sanders has been named the 28th the 28th head coach for the Colorado Buffaloes, uh, Coach Prime is leaving Jackson State to go coach the Colorado Buffaloes. And, and that was pretty hot because after the game, uh, we're all in there waiting. I mean, Jackson State media room, I have to paint the scene for you. Jackson State's media room is kind of small, right? It's typically not, not as many media people, but it was jam packed for Dooley. And then everybody was waiting for Coach Prime after the presentation of the SWAG Championship trophy and all that stuff. And we've been hearing the rumblings, Colorado this, the figures came out, all of that stuff. And we, we pretty much knew he was going to Colorado. Hell, we did a whole live about it just last night. So we we known us together. Before I get into all of that, though, actually, i pause. Jackson, the city of Jackson, Jackson State. I love you guys. You all, I'm going to make sure I'm looking into the camera. You all are awesome. You guys, I've been to a lot of college football games. I've never been to a tailgate like that. It was the best tailgate I've ever been to. And ever since I've been doing this YouTube stuff, I've been doing it for a while. And I've been to some places where people knew who I was and, and showed some love or whatever. But nothing, nothing compares to the love that I received today in Jackson, Mississippi on the campus or at Veterans Memorial Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi. Nothing. Nothing. It was the best time I've ever had at a football game, out of any sporting event. The best time I've ever had. Ever. Period. So, thank you, thank you, thank you all so, so much. I mean, y'all got me feeling like I can run for the mayor in Jackson. You dig? I mean, I got business cards. I had I took so many pictures with people. Hell, people even gave me a few dollars. Said, thanks for showing up. You know what I mean? Like, like that. <laughs> Excuse me. You guys were awesome. I, I, there was nothing I turned down, by the way. I'm one of them type of people. I, I ain't saying no to nothing. I'm leaving here with something. If you offering, I'm taking. You know what I mean? I might not take as much as you offer, but I got food, I, rib tips, chicken. Hell, somebody offered me a beer, and guess what? I took it. I took the beer, too. So thank you, Jackson. I have to say that first because you guys were oh this was this was just so fun i spent i spent the last two nights here and it's just been it's been amazing shout out to deputy mario shout out to travis and shout out to each and every single person that i met while i was here because you guys like i said were just oh i don't know what happened with that but like shout out to deputy mario shout out to travis you guys were awesome like i said I, i've never had an experience like this since I've been in this media space. Now, back to the issue at hand, right? And, and by the way, if you just to let you know, even with Prime leaving, I'm not leaving. So you're losing Prime, but you're gaining me. I'm sticking around. I ain't going nowhere. This was too cool for me to leave. The, th the thing, the reason why this was so awesome is because it combined three of my favorite things. Black people, football, and food. <laughs> Black people, if you've been following me for a long time, I love me some black people. My woman talks about me all the time. I love me. I love my people. I love our culture. I love food. I love to eat. <laughs> and, and I love football. So you guys have it all encapsulating, encapsulated. The swag has it all. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't talking. I ain't going nowhere. Just let's, let me let me go ahead and get, make that straight. Because I've seen some comments already on my short that I posted. Like, oh, Jeff, I hope you cover Colorado. Mm -mm, ain't happening. Ain't happening at all. I don't give a damn about what happens in Colorado. I'm sorry. Just it is what it is. Good luck to you, coach. But I'm, I'm, I'm with Jay State. I'm with the swag. I'm with Grambling. I'm with you guys. So anyway. So let me paint the picture for you after the game. JSU wins the championship, wins the SWAC championship, back-to-back -back SWAC titles, undefeated in conference. And they have the trophy presentation 
which which and this is no knock to JSU and 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 but the Trumpy presentation with the with the police officers and all of that stuff that was they did that real janky. I don't know. I didn't like I didn't like the way all of that was handled. Just whatever. With the media, you'd have media passes but you couldn't get in the inner circle and then finally I was able to get up there and it just it just is what it is. But after that's over, so go over to the media room. It's jam packed. It is sold out. Like it's shoulder to shoulder. Everybody's in there packed. Like even when Dooley comes, because I didn't. I, they said student athletes, Southern players were in there first, and I missed them. I mean, I'm just being honest. I missed them. I was out there watching, recording the the celebration of the SWAC championship. But even when Coach Dooley, Coach Dooley of Southern, came through, I mean, they had to clear away because it, it just wasn't any room for him to come through. And he came and he spoke to the media. We asked him all the questions anybody had to ask. He didn't turn down no question. He didn't shy away from no question. Hell, they even asked him about Deion Sanders leaving to go to Colorado. He answered everything, and it was awesome. Shout out to Coach Eric Dooley. So anyway, we're in there. Andrew Roberts is the media relations guy for the SWAC. Shout out to Andrew Roberts. Awesome dude. He's sitting there. He's like, okay, we'll have uh, Coach Prime along with Shador Sanders and one other student athlete. To, uh, uh, I don't know who he's. He just said one other student athlete. And so we're waiting, you know, just hanging out, kicking it, whatever. Dude, earlier, three hours ago, told me, he said, you know, be, be prepared to wait 30, 35 minutes, maybe even 40 minutes for prime. He takes a long time post game. I was like, all right, you know, whatever. That's cool. So I'm expecting to wait, right? So we're waiting, we're waiting. And someone walks up. If you were in there, you know who it was. They walked up to uh, Commissioner, Ro I mean, not Commissioner Roberts, Andrew Roberts. And whispered something in his in his ear, but kept patting his back. And I was like, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. That is not good. I could just tell. Body language tells you everything. And Andrew's listening. And he's shaking his head. And you just see his face. Looks puzzled. 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 And he's just like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Whatever. And he sits down. And he looks like this for a minute, right? He's just looking. He's looking like a sad damn Pup, like his dog just died, right? And so I'm just like, oh my God, like something like he's not coming is what I'm automatically thinking. I'm automatically thinking he's not coming. So he's sitting there and Andrew sits there for about 30 seconds and finally stands up and says, I've just been informed Coach Sanders and the Jackson State student athletes have declined doing the post-game press conference. They have called an emergency players meeting and will not be joining us tonight. What? Are you serious? Are you serious? That's not cool. That is not cool. Like that, I mean, I, I don't care what you have to say. That is not acceptable. You have to face the fire just like you've been facing the fire each and every single week, each and every single game. That is not cool. Eric Dooley just, he just saw his team lose a swag championship for the second consecutive years and sat up there and answered every single question. Just because you're taking a job at Colorado does not mean you are not at liberty to skip out on the media session. That was a weak move. And when, when Andrew Roberts said that, I kid you not, right hand on the Bible, anybody that was in there, I said, that is weak. I said it loud. That is weak because it was weak. That was weak. That is not, that it, it was not except you owe the city of Jackson to the, the Jackson State University, the state of Mississippi, the SWAC. You owe them and they should be able to ask you questions. You have to face the fire. But see, you know what happened immediately after? He does meet with a team. He, he met with the team. But he put it out his narrative. His narrative, a nine minute video that was posted to all his social media platforms about him accepting the job. He never said the school, obviously we know the school, the school put out on their Twitter page. He never said the school, but he put it out the way he wanted to put it out. Now, here's the thing. Some people will say, because I've already gotten this, because I put it, I put this up on my uh, on my YouTube and I put it up on my Insta, uh, my Twitter. I said, yo, that was a weak move. Say what you want. That, that, that stuff was weak to not, to not answer our questions, to not answer what we had to say, to not have to, you obviously he explained himself, but you should be questioned 
on why you're leaving Jackson State. You should have to answer why you saying why you told us when you took the job at JSU that you were there to level the playing field, that you were there to commit and you wouldn't leave until you finished the mission and that God called you to JSU. You should have to answer that, those questions from the all of those press people that were in there to talk to Coach Dooley and then to talk to you. I was in there. It was jam-packed. It was shoulder to shoulder. That's not cool. That was not cool. And so, you know, people will say, well, he had to tell the team first. He had to tell the team first. He couldn't tell the team till after the game. And all of that is true. And all of that is true. But tell the team. And then come back and answer to the media. They would have waited. We would have waited. We would have waited. Tell the team. But you know why he couldn't do that? He had a flight to catch. <laughs> he had a flight to catch the boulder. I was told while I was sitting there in the, in the parking lot that Prime had a flight, a private charter flight from Jackson to Boulder at 10.06. They had it down to the minute, 10.06, <laughs> And did you guys notice something? Did you notice this? Who didn't play today? Who didn't suit up for Jackson State today? Shiloh didn't play today. Did you guys see Shiloh in any videos? Did you see Shiloh in the game on the sideline? I saw Gilly. I dapped up Wallow. I saw Ashley Robinson. Shadur threw a few touchdowns, but you didn't see Shiloh. You want to know why you didn't see Shiloh? Because Shiloh's not rocking with this. And Shiloh, you can say whatever you want about Coach Prime and his kids and how he treats them or whatever. I mean, he's, he's their father. But Shiloh is the one thing that's been consistent. He pushes back on his dad. He pushes back on some of the things that his dad does. More so than any of the other ones, at least that we see, at least that we see from a pup from the public sphere. Whether it was, and it goes all the way back to when they had a reality show on OWN. Shiloh pushed back on his dad. He's always pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. And another thing, Shiloh loves it at Jackson State. Shiloh loves it at Jackson State. He does. He does. He called himself the official J6 member. He had a, a drum major mace. He loves JSU. And he's already transferred once, meaning he can't transfer again, even if he wanted to. But from what I was told, folks told me, Shiloh said he ain't going to Colorado. It's just what I was told. I don't know if it's true or not. But what I was told, he told his dad he wasn't going to Colorado. And he couldn't even leave if he wanted to until he graduates. You know, so... Those are just my immediate immediate thoughts on Coach Prime. And, and one last thing, you know, he put out the because he's not going to talk to the media and talk to us and have us ask him questions that don't fit the script. You know, th there was a script that that he wanted that he laid out for that nine minute video. And one of the 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 oh, it made me want to throw my phone. One of the things I heard him say. He talked about his calling from God and that God basically was like, y'all can't tell me God can't call me twice and tell me to be at two different places at different times. OK, whatever, whatever, you know. But another thing he said was you either elevated or terminated, elevated or terminated was essentially like if you had to put a title of the video, the video would have been titled titled elevated or terminated. Here's the problem I have with that. You're saying JSU isn't good enough. Now, you're saying JSU isn't good enough. But when you were hired here, you said you wanted to level the playing field. You said that you want to have four and five star players come to HBCUs, not just JSU, HBCUs, and to make them on the same level as the Alabamas and the Georgias of the world and the Oregons and the USC's and the freaking Colorado's. That's what you said. Not me. I didn't make it up. I didn't say it. I'm one of the coaches at Jackson State. You said that. And now it's time to elevate. You sold these beautiful people of Jackson. You sold them wolf cookies. That was the number one thing from all the folks I talked to because I wanted to come here. I wanted to come. I told you I was going to come here if you, if you made it to the championship game anyway. 
But one of the big reasons why I had to come here is because I wanted to feel you. I wanted to touch you. I wanted to talk to you. I wanted to feel the aura that is Jackson State. And you got, and I felt it. And it was amazing. And you guys told me this wasn't even, this ain't the real crowd. Meaning it's normally way bigger than this. But the, 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 the somberness took over and folks stayed home. And the number one reason why people were upset, it wasn't that he left them for money. They know that they couldn't offer the money that Colorado could offer or Power 5 school could offer. It wasn't the money. It wasn't even the fact that he was leaving. They always kind of expected him to leave. And this ain't one or two people. I talked to a ton of people today. The reason why they were upset with him is the fact that he told them that God told him to be there. That he had a calling from God and the call was collect, meaning he had to pay for it. And he wanted to change things. And the first chance he got, he bounced. The first, the very first. The very first chance he got, he bounced. Because here's the thing. Prime could have came to JSU. And not ever said those words, God called me, I'm here to make a change, level the playing field. You could have accepted the job at Jackson State and not used all of those words. Your words are powerful. Words mean something. People be believe in the words, especially when you use them in religion and God and how much you're going to do and what all you're going to do and, and the changes you're going to make. Like words are powerful. Words mean a lot, especially when you use a religion and you're tugging on people's heart. You're tugging on people's emotions. These people, everybody that I talked to today, I didn't talk to young people because young people don't really watch my show. <laughs> I talked to older people, people that have been tapped in and invested in the JS, JSU since the 70s and 80s and 90s. We're talking 30, 40 and 50 years. You tugged on their emotions. You made them feel like change was really coming. And then you go out and get a Travis. And then you go undefeated two years in a row in the swag, undefeated on the season this year. They were, they are emotional, and they will forever be emotionally invested in Jackson State. Their, their emotional investment isn't going to stop just because Deion Sanders is leaving. No, they've been emotionally invested into this program for 50 years, 40 50 years and you came here and they saw you as a beacon of hope, not just to change things here in Jackson, but to, to change the overall perspective of HBCUs period across the country through the avenue of football. This, I'm not just making this up. This is what I heard from the people. I was, I was here. I talked to them. They told me and I could understand it because I felt the same way. And the first chance you get, you leave him. Folks knew that he was leaving. And here's another thing. Folks knew he was leaving to go to Colorado for two weeks now. They've known it for at least two weeks. Some folks have known it for two weeks. Other folks found out around Thanksgiving. I heard one person say, yeah, I've known it for two weeks. Or another person say, I found out uh, while I was eating my turkey at Thanksgiving. Dog. Dog, dog. And, and, and so let me go back. Let me go back to the video, the nine minute video. Hit that thumbs up button, too, by the way, man. We, we just chopping it up. I'm not going to talk your ear off all night because I'll dive into this deeper when I get back home. And, and I also am going to put up uh, the sights and sounds that I had from my experience here because I had such a great time. And I want you guys to be able to feel to tr however you can. I don't know if you really can, but to feel as much as I felt by being here in person if you wasn't able to make it out. Um, in the, in the nine minute video that he, where he announced he was going, he was leaving Jackson State, he didn't say where he was going. In the nine minute video, he talked about how, um, he can still impact lives of black men. He used African American, but we're going to say black, black men in Colorado. <sighs> that is so disingenuous. That is so disingenuous to uh, it. That is garbage. That is so garbage because here, here's the problem I have with that. You sold 
a community, a city, a university, and a conference on changing HBCUs with the bringing the best black athletes back home. Bringing the best black athletes to PWIs, to a Power 5 Pac-12 school, that shit ain't new. That's nothing new. They've been doing that since integration. That is nothing new. You, you're not, he was like, this is what he said. These were the words, and I might be butchering it, but just stick with me. He said at the next level, meaning FBS, meaning like Power 5, said there were four black coaches fired, right? At least he said at least four black coaches. And there's there was essentially no consideration to hire other black coaches at the FBS level. Boo fucking who? I'm sorry to use my language, so excuse my language, but boo who? Who gives a damn if these coaches get fired at the FBS level and their buyouts are 20, 30, 40 million dollars? Who gives a damn? Don't cry me a river with that. You're not going to make a change in that aspect by being Deion Sanders. You're not going to get more black coaches hired. It, you're just not. Black coaches have been getting hired and fired from the FBS level for eternity. Just like you wouldn't get them hired at the NFL level. They just don't want to hire you. Or when they do, they give you a short leash. So you're not going to change nothing with that. He made it seem like he was going to change something with that. You're not changing nothing at that level. No, you're not. That's, that's called big business. They don't give a damn who Deion Sanders is. They will fire you if you ain't good enough. If you go up or BSing at this terrible job in Colorado, where they've had like three winning seasons in the last 25 years, three or four winning seasons since 1995, you're not changing anything at that level. He sold this story during the nine-minute thing about changing the stuff that, at that level. No, you are making change at this level. At this level, it reminds me during the SWAC presentation, and, 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 and the more and more I think about it, I shouldn't be surprised that he didn't talk to us because one, talking to us, you're, he's not able to control the narrative that is being put out as far as visuals, audio, et cetera, as, that's being put out about his departure. Whereas having his son, Deion Jr., shout out to Deion Jr., recorded and having his speech that he's already pre being prepared for the last two weeks he's able to control what's being put out and not have to respond to anything. <sighs> Another thing he said was, and I caught this. Uh, let me know if you caught this in the comments. Let me know if you caught this in the chat. He said, I'm talking to uh, A.D. Robinson and my recommendation for the next head coach at Jackson State should be T.C. Taylor and he and they should retain a few coaches on the staff. Let me translate that for you. That means those guys aren't going with him to Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he's recommending TC because TC ain't going up to Boulder with him. He said, I'm recommending TC because TC ain't going to have a job if y'all don't keep him. <laughs> that's what that, that's what that sounded like to me. That was fancy schmancy. That was window dressing saying TC ain't coming to Boulder with me. So I'm recommending y'all stay here with him. And you know, that's not, that's kind of disingenuous because he demoted TC this year. TC got demoted. How the hell are you going to promote or uh, uh, advocate for TC to get the head coaching job when TC was the offensive coordinator last year and you demoted him this year? You know, we do, who know we didn't recommend? Dennis Thurman, because Dennis Thurman's going with him. You know, we didn't recommend Brett Bartoloni, because Bartoloni's going with him. You know, we didn't recommend Tim Brewster, because Tim Brewster's going with him. Now, those guys are also white except for Thurman, but still, he's not going to recommend them, advocate for them, because he plans on taking them guys to Boulder. TC, not so much. And he said, a few guys should get retained around here, meaning y'all not coming with me to Pac-12. Y'all not coming with me to the Buffaloes. Oh, man. Man, oh, man. Dog. I don't want to make this another somber night. We had a somber night last night. I wanted to make sure you guys could hear me. We had some goofy audio issues last night. But this experience, this was an experience of a lifetime. And y'all said it wasn't even capacity. Jackson, this was my first time. It will not be my last time. Y'all showed me too much love. Y'all showed too much love. Y'all too beautiful of a people. Too awesome of a people. Too resilient of a people. And something good is going to happen to y'all 
just because how great y'all are. Y'all are so awesome, man. I had such a good time. I can I cannot wait till I come back. Uh, I cannot wait to bring somebody back with me uh, to to experience what I experienced. This was awesome. Uh, unfortunately, you lost your coach, and, and I think he said he's gonna coach the celebration bowl. I mean, that's cool, and it, and and he'll probably face the media after the celebration bowl. He probably has some kind. Of, well, he's not even gonna be here next year, so who gives a damn about the requirements? But by that time, it's two weeks later. I mean, nobody gonna be. I mean, he he's recruiting players to Colorado. The decommits are already happening, by the way. Uh, C.J. Lockhart, who I've had on this platform, has decommitted. A few more players will probably decommit from Jackson State. But Jackson State, Jackson as a city, Jackson State as a school, as a football program, as a university. I know A.D. Ashley Robinson. He's cooking up something. He, he, didn't, he didn't find out this news tonight. And the players didn't find out this news tonight. I mean, he says, oh, nobody knew. Everybody knew. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was going across the ticker on ESPN. Everybody knew. <laughs> And the main reason, if you don't know what the main reason why folks knew, because he was recruiting players. And you can't recruit players to Jackson State when you're taking a job at Colorado. So he was telling recruits like, hey, you know, we're at JSU and you see us with these JSU hats on, but we're headed to Boulder. <laughs> we're not staying here much longer. We're headed to Boulder. Uh, so, yeah, man. Just off the top of my head, I don't know. He he, because even in the nine minute video, he was telling his players not to hit the portal. But just off the top of my head, the players that I know will hit the portal, I'm like ninety nine percent sure is going to hit the portal and end up in Colorado. Travis, of course, Shador, of course, Cameron, of course, uh, Kevin Coleman, of course. All those guys, those four guys are probably at the door, headed to Boulder, um, and yeah. So Coach Prime is now Coach Deion Sanders. At Colorado. <laughs> um, and we'll dive into this more when I get back home to my studio and I, I have a call in show and everything because I want to hear from you all because you all were so beautiful, so nice, so awesome here in Jackson. And for the folks that weren't able to make it, I want to hear your thoughts on this. I've given my thoughts. You've listened to me for almost 30 minutes. And so I want to hear from you all and leave in the comments. Leave in the comments how you feel about him leaving. People will say you're emotional. Yeah, you probably are emotional. You probably are emotional. Because he was emotional with you as far as he drew you in. He, he play, tugged on your emotions as far as being a coach and as far as being more than a coach to being a pillar of this community and being a, a, a provocateur of change, a conduit of change. And yeah, you changed a little bit. Like, yeah, you changed some of it. But the attendance, oh, that was always there. You know, you got a new facilities and you you put a spotlight on this place that would have never happened. And I'm not going to act like it, it would. I mean, maybe it would have happened, but you you expedited the process on a lot of things. I'm not going to act like you didn't have that. I'd be lying if I said Deion Sanders didn't do good things for Jackson State. Right. I'd be lying. That's just not that's simply not true. But Jackson State did a whole lot of good things for Deion Sanders. A whole lot of good things for Deion Sanders. And he talked about this place as if it wasn't a stepping stone job for him when he took the job and throughout the, the two years that he's been here. But the whole time, it was. It was just a stepping stone. Because if it wasn't just a stepping stone, you wouldn't go to weak-ass Colorado. Excuse my language. You wouldn't be leaving JSU to go to freaking Colorado. This ain't Arkansas or Ole Miss or Florida State, those jobs make sense. USC in the Pac-12, UCLA, those jobs make sense. Those are winning programs. Those are desirable cities in some cases. Those places, the weather's better. It's not Jackson State. It's not HBCUs. It's not the culture, but it makes sense. Somewhat, I guess. It makes sense. But you use that language about God calling you. You use that language about the change, the conduit of change and all the change that you wanted to make. You use that language, not us. You did. And so therefore, people are pissed. And rightfully so. And for everything that I'm hearing, even your own son is pissed. Even your own son is pissed. And he didn't play. It sounds like they got it got so intense. Uh, it, intense enough. Let me not say it so intense. Intense enough to where they benched Shiloh. I don't even think he was at the game. 
Shiloh Sanders has been a starting safety at JSU outside of the injuries since he since he's been there. And he didn't play one snap. One, not one. I'm not even sure he was at the vet today. From what I understand, because he's that upset about the decision that his father made. And can you blame him? Can you blame him? No. And the people are upset. But JSU, trust, trust and believe. Y'all going to be fine. Them people I seen out there today, y'all going to be fine. The folks that tap into these videos and stuff, y'all are going to be fine. I can promise you that. My name is Jeff Lights Jr. This is the Victory Formation Sports Show. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for listening to me rant for 30 minutes. Uh, shout out to y'all in the chat. Hit that thumbs up button on your way out. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, at JLIT7, at JLIT7. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. My name is Jeff Lighty Jr. Jackson, I love you. Mwah. You might have just become my favorite new city. It made me feel like the mayor. I will be back, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.